Now, this part is very uh, important. Com computing expectations by conditioning. So what is this? If, if y is given, if you know y is equals to particular y, and then you calculate the expectation of x, okay? and this will become a number. This number actually whose value depends on y. This is not a random variable. Everybody agree? This is a number. If you give, if you were given y, the lowercase y. Okay. If you were given lowercase y, and you calculate expectation automatically, you get a number. Do you? Just like what we got. We got a number. Okay. So, but if we don't fix y. Okay, this this expectation, this expectation x given y is a, actually a function, because y can take different random values. Y is a random variable. Y can take different values. Okay, every time when y take different values, expectation x given y will become a different number. Make sense? So hence, a random variable. This is a random variable. So this is a random variable. Because it is a function of random variable y. Okay. Its value is expectation x given y equals to y. Okay. Its value is whenever the value of y is lowercase y. If you fix the y value, you are going to get a value of expectation x given y equals to lowercase y. Okay. So this is the. So, guys, uh, I hope I make it, make it very clear. This is a number. This is not a random. This is not a random. Okay. If you fix y, this is automatically you get a number, deterministic. But if you don't fix y, and this function will become this will become a function of the y because it depends on what y you give me, I will get a different expectation of x given y. So this is a random variable. So this random variable, if you take expectation of this random variable, expectation of the expectation of x given y again, it will become expectation of x. This one will be margin out. Okay. So if y is a discrete random variable, that's what we discussed. Discrete random variable, it Poisson discrete. So expectation of x is actually you take different y value. If you want to calculate expectation of x, and uh, what you do is. You just have different expectation of x under different y realization, y value. And then you times the probability that you equal to y. Then you add all of them together. This will become the expect because this is this part. Am I making sense? Stop. OK, not making sense? OK. OK. Yeah, they could be independent. Yeah. So why do you fix y and then Because <laughs> because you want to calculate the expectation of x given that y. This is uh, later we're going to have uh, after this we're going to have an example. So y equals to y. Okay. So x y are two random variables. Okay. X and Y are two random variables. Now, if if you give the value of Y, okay, this Y equals to the lowercase Y, and then you calculate the expectation of X given Y equals to Y. This is what we have here. Okay, X and Y they are independent, right? Okay, so very importantly, that's uh, after this class, read the book again. <laughs> x, y are independent Poisson random variables. Now, given that x plus y <coughs> equals to n, okay, 
So x y cannot be equal to n. No, I mean, I mean, yes. Uh, like the, the question before, I mean, I thought the, the condition is n a complex. Is n a complex? Yeah, n is a constant. x plus y could equal to n, okay? but x and y could be independent. Yeah. Is this clear? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Even if you have independent random variables, you, 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 you generate, for example, you do the uh, simulation. x is a random variable, right? You can do the simulation. And y is a random variable. They are independent. So we talked about independence before. Independence does not necessarily mean they are mutually exclusive. We talked about, we have brought that one before, right? And also, independence does not mean that you cannot add them together. And uh, even if x, y plus y equals to some value, right? So x, y could still be independent, random variable, OK? So what do we, uh, that's a very good question, Sna. Very good question. Uh, X, Y, if you, do, if you run simulation, if you do the software coding, you can, you can simulate X, Y with different realizations. You will find that there will be moment if you add X, Y together, it will equal to a constant value. But uh, given that, and then you can find the expectation of X, right? So here, what my point is, if, if you were given Y equals to a particular value, and if you calculate X, expectation of x, the point is this will be a number. This is not a random variable. Th is this clear? Is this clear? But if you don't fix y, okay, this will become a random variable. If you can understand this, if this part is clear, then we can proceed to the next step. Because this is a random variable, and this is uh, not a random variable, because you have already given y, and uh, you calculate a deterministic number. But over here, y is a y is a random variable. Agree? The expectation of x given y actually depending on what y value you take. If you're taking different y values, you got a different expectation of x given y. So that's why this guy is a random variable. But how to calculate this random variable, uh, the expectation of this random variable? Expectation of this random variable is actually equals to expectation of x. Because what you do here is actually you have expectation of x given y. If you give a particular value of y and then times the probability y equals to y, this will give you the, this is this side. This is expectation of expectation of x given y. Because <coughs> over here, you are having a sum. This is actually the outside expectation. This times this, the sum. This is outside expectation. And the inside expectation, you actually just try to give a realization and then, so that you can multiply by this and then calculate the outside expectation. Yes? So there, uh, there has to be some relationship between x and y, even if they are independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's right. OK? So. If y is, uh, and uh, most of the time in the problem, x and y, and if they are equal to a particular value, it will be given. Or they, they actually, how x vary with y, and they will be given. So if y is a continuous random variable, OK? If this is a continuous case, so, so that's why I use blue and blue. You see, discrete case and continuous case, they are very similar. The only, only difference is you change the summation to be the integration, because it's continuous. 
and you still have this, and but here you don't have the probability mass function. You have probability density function. But a probability density function at a particular value equals to zero. Agree? So that's why you need to multiply by dy. Calculate small area and then multiply the by the value. You got a probability. So this is a basic probability density function and dy. Okay, so so that's why we have conditional expectation right now, and after we have independence and a conditional probability uh, introduced before. Okay, so again, discrete case, continuous case, the difference is summation replaced with integration. Am I making sense? Okay, and also you have probability mass function. And this is probability density function. But probability density function at a particular value multiplied by dy, a small interval, it gives you the probability in that interval, right? OK. Am I making sense? Now let's prove we, we said this, this is true because we know this is an expectation conditional expectation, right? given y equals to y. Now, we, if we know probability y equals to y, okay. now prove that this part, if you do the derivation, it equals to expectation x. Now I'm going to show you the proof. So the summation y expectation of x to the y equals to y times probability y equals to y. This is actually equals to, you see, if so far this is a summation of y. Now, in order to calculate this expectation, we have equation for this expectation, do we? That's in the, in the previous slide. So now let's put that equation over here. So we still keep the summation of y. Now we're going to focus on the, this part. Now let's expand this part. So this part will be summation of x. And we have x probability x equals to lowercase x given y equals to y times probability y equals to y. Okay. So this part of it equals to summation y, summation x. Then let's expand this guy. So we have x here, but uh, we have joint distribution. That is x equals to lowercase x y equals to y divided by probability y equals to y times probability y equals to y. Well, everybody agree? We can cancel this guy. Can we cancel this guy? Now this will equals to summation y, summation x x times probability x equals to x y <laughs> equals to y okay. now let's move this to the outer side and then we move y over here so what we get is x equals to x y equals to y So if we sum them together, this is actually joint distribution will become the marginal distribution probability x equals to x. So this equals to expectation of x. So this completes the proof. Now let's have a look at a new problem. 
Now, how to use how to use this result? So this formula is actually very important because this formula will enable us to compute the expectation of a particular random variable using the conditional conditional expectation and the conditional uh, the y distribution. 